what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're gonna be talking about scream 7 in this video here today and we're gonna be pointing the finger right back at everybody's favorite final girl sydney prescott everybody's favorite little victim as cotton put it in scream 2 so we're gonna pretend that scream 7 is sydney centric and we're gonna, just gonna go over an idea in my, of mine in which sydney could again be given a purpose very significant meaning and just not showing up for the sake of it because it's her franchise and bada bing bada boom you know she needs a story she needs to have a reason to be here so let's just dive on into it i'm mostly going to be recycling what i stated in my last true crime theory video but now what i'm doing is i'm shifting stuff around to allow sydney prescott to be effectively important to the narrative so let's pretend scream 7 is sydney centric in some capacity our opening target is still someone with a deep disdain for true crime. They hate stab, ghost face, and anything related to exploiting real tragedies. This is a teenage boy still in his senior year of high school. He lives a few houses down actually from Sydney Prescott, so we're already in Sydney's neck of the woods. He has an entire podcast dedicated to why true crime is bad for our culture, the youth of America. He's from Woodsboro as well, so his disdain for ghost face and figures like Gail Weathers is a little personal to him. And there's also an active killer that's knocked off a few teens in the past month or so. One night after finishing recording a new episode for his podcast, he hears some noises downstairs. Naturally, he goes to check them out. We, the viewer, then see that a ghost face killer is in his house. We get some stalking sequences, but he doesn't know what we do yet. And it can be very reminiscent, like I stated in my last video, of Wes's scene in Screen 5 before he bought, bought or bit the bullet as well. Uh, a brawl could occur once Ghostface makes their presence known, but Ghostface is killed by the boy. And then we jump to some time later after, again, a survivor survived the opening attack by knocking off a Ghostface killer. The podcast team who survived said opening attack has given up his passion and is just seen as a traumatized student who still hates true crime. We meet a group of teens who are also seniors at the same high school as our opening survivor. Sydney Prescott is actually a counselor at this school. She's also recently released a new book and completed a book tour for the book during the last summer break. The book is about the Stab franchise and why it's harmful to society. She actually was working on this book during Screen 5, so Richie and Amber's antics were quite convenient at the time now our other main protagonist can be a girl in this group of friends we're centered on she can be a Sydney or Sam type her parents just got divorced so she's upset about that but she has a loving boyfriend and a group of friends who love true crime and horror just as much as she does naturally because of their interest in horror and true crime the new killer targets these people but where does the new ghost face stem from if you recall in my last video i revealed that it would have ultimately just been the opening victim gone off the deep end but i'm not going to do that i'm changing it around from that so it's not the opening victim but ultimately the new ghost face killer is revealed to be the opening victim the opening victim's older brother who adores sydney prescott and feels betrayed by her see sunrise studios in the midst of all of this stuff that's happening in this fictional scream 7 of mine is actively working on rebooting stab for the big screen the older brother hates true crime just like his little brother with the podcast but he also loves sydney and values her story since it's helped him overcome struggles in his life he hates the Stab franchise for exploiting Sydney's life and was proud to see her put a stop to it a decade ago when she forced them to create new stories. However, what he did not like was Sydney's recent statements related to his little brother's attack. Reporters actually spoke to Sydney that night and asked her what she thought since she was just a few houses down. Sydney said it's absolutely tragic, but I'm glad they made it out alive and that they managed to kill the person who took out those other kids. They also asked her about the Stab franchise being on the verge of a return, and Sydney dismissed it basically saying she thinks she let her books say enough regarding the matter and she has no further comments. So what's the older brother's issue here? See, Sydney didn't do enough to advocate against the Stab reboot in their eyes, and they find it insulting that someone with her platform and influence would dodge a chance to make a positive change that could get the plug pulled on Stab. Sydney isn't the idol that they thought she was, and now they hope that their own spree as Ghostface will open old wounds for Sydney while sending a direct message to Sunrise Studios that Stab needs to stop. What better way to do that in their mind than by knocking off the original Final Girl? 
the ghost face attack at the beginning of the film is still connected to this online community of people that make bets on people's lives and the podcast kid just happened to be the unfortunate pick of the week at the time the group would pick a student at their school and bet on if they make it out alive that's why three or four other people were already dead before the opening attack so this group is embody embodying or embodies the thought process that the older brother and his little brother with the podcast have of how true crime has a negative effect on the youth of america because look at what these teens are doing but where does the other protagonist girl and her friend group come in well her boyfriend was a member of this online betting group and the older brother found this out and assumed that she and the rest of his friends knew about it but they didn't know the older brother's motive against them is just simply a revenge for his little brother and it's also all tied to true crime and how these people represent everything he believes in terms of how it corrupts us since his brother almost lost his life thanks to a sick game involving betting on people's lives the ultimate goal for them is getting caught exposing the boyfriend and his betting community taking out the woman who isn't the person she thought she was in Sydney Prescott and getting the stab reboot canceled. So the commentary here is the damage true crime has on some people and stan culture and how a select few people put these complete strangers, oftentimes celebrities, on pedestals, then place these expectations on them. And when said celebrities do not meet those expecta expectations, they have meltdowns, they start getting mad at the celebrity and again this is a complete stranger that had no idea that they should be living up to these expectations i think that using sydney prescott to commentate on this would be great she's written a book she's also at the center of an iconic horror franchise within this world she's a real life final girl so there's bound to be some lunatic fanatic out there of hers and what happens when said one said fanatic is turned away from her they go off of the deep end and they don the ghost face mask to send a direct shot to sunrise studios in the hopes to get the stab reboot canceled but to also get back at sydney prescott for betraying the loyalty they've shown her for all these years loyalty she did not even know she had because again this person is a psychopath so what i've done is i've just constructed a story that does not rely too much on the past it's not digging up old wounds with marine but it's also still very relevant to the toxic fandom themes introduced in screen five let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification there is a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys I will see you in the next video.